It's really cool to be here. And um, how did we get here? How did you get here with creating uh, Sync to the Mountain Studio? It's easy for me to just say that it just emerged, uh, that it just showed up. Sing to the Mountain has resonated with me for years now. There's no specific moment where I know that it showed up, uh, but certainly uh, I was away at a retreat. Uh, you were one of the teachers at the retreat up at Joshua Tree several years ago and guiding the mountain meditation. And I was looking out the window, standing while I was doing the meditation, seeing Big Bear Mountain out in the distance and uh, went into this deep, place and as i came out of that all of a sudden the mountain had whole new meaning to me then as i left that went off to hawaii and visited a volcano and next thing i know i'm with the mountain there too and this idea of a mountain and what shows up for me the metaphor of whatever a mountain represents for any of us but specifically for me how a mountain sits it can withstand all sorts of trials and tribulations and the joys and the beauties and whatever I place onto it. And for me to embrace that, that, well, what if I am the mountain? And there are teachings around the globe that kind of have gone around with this idea for uh, centuries, maybe even thousands of years. So it started to resonate with me. And then as I was doing my therapy work as a therapist and clients would come in, they would come in to talk to process and as a mountain i can simply sit hear their stories change as a mountain will change but be able to do something with it uh so when they leave they, maybe they leave a little bit of themselves with the mountain but they walk out with something else whether it was a pine the essence of a pine cone or the smell of an aroma a joy a disappointment a sadness whatever it is being able to sing to the mountain so and then uh, there's a, a singing group uh, called Elephant Revival. They have a song called Sing to the Mountain. And it's, in essence, along the same thing. And it's like, ah, sing to the mountain. So all of this kind of came together for me. And then I've had my own personal experiences locally here, climbing a mountain, sitting on a mountain, meditating on it, and embracing all that I've ever experienced while I'm on this mountain. And the mountain... This particular mountain, it's called Kwai Pai here in San Diego County, uh, is 125 million years old. And it's been there the whole time before any of humanity ever existed. And I sit there and contemplate that and absorb it and uh, connect with nature and stuff. So it kind of formulated then when I was say, well, if I wanted to do something, whether it's a YouTube channel or have a, along the way I got into photography and deeper than I've been taking photographs for since the seventies, but recently within the last year and a half or so, I really got into videography and photographs and well, let's call my studio, sing to the mountain studio. And, uh, so here we are. It's, it's a framework to make a container. Yeah, and a beautiful one you've already created with your videos of nature and all that you're finding out on the trail. So it fits very well with our theme. And I think a lot of mindfulness teachers will certainly relate to the mountain meditation. And uh, here I am singing to the mountain or singing on the mountain live with you. You mentioned bringing the photography and the mindfulness together. That's one of the aspects that is becoming endemic and part of my channel is I may be talking about photography, but somehow my mindful presence becomes an S aspect of it. My, the practices that I've learned uh, through MBSR and some other trainings, blending that and bringing it in so that it can go back out into the world. So. Here's my experience taking a picture of a bird or a uh, landscape, etc. And uh, being mindful with it. And I'm finding that many photographers have similar experiences, whether they're meditation practitioners or not, that they find that they're in a mindful state, that they're in a flow state while they're taking their photos. And they know it when they're not. They usually don't like their experience. And 
So being able to pull all of this together in a way that teaching mindfulness while also talking about, I'm not teaching photography. I'm not that expert of a photographer, but I can teach mindfulness or give little tidbits related to my photography, using the photography as a, a platform to talk about a topic. Beautiful. You know, I find that true of artists. My wife's an artist and it's so interesting how much more and how naturally you need to or can be in the moment as an artist. It puts you in the moment. So it all ties together and it's beautiful. I'm wondering, Alan, what it is about Sing to the Mountain Studio that uh, as you and I are forming this relationship uh, back out into the community, that what it, what's attracting your world into my world to form whatever is happening right here? Uh, well, you know, we've known each other for a while now, since, as you mentioned, uh, being at Joshua Tree together and uh, subsequently meeting every Sunday on Zoom with the sessions that we've been holding for close to six years. I think you joined in somewhere along that trajectory of our time on Zoom. And um, I got to a point recently, uh, this fall, where I felt like there'd be um, uh, something worthwhile if we sat down and reinvented those Zoom sessions. So um, MBSR teachers will understand the nine dot puzzle and much like that, taking a look at all the white space around the puzzle of the nine dots and seeing what resources are available for change, which was in the air. Um, your studio and you having become a close friend and participated um, so closely in our Zoom sessions came to mind. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful if somehow we combined the Sunday Zoom sessions we'd been holding for primarily MBSR teachers and expanded the teaching population to mindfulness teachers and meet in a way that was um, live. And having put together a Facebook group for the Zoom sessions, uh, we have over 400 teachers on that group. And it became a natural platform to be able to present something live. And Sing to the Mountain Studios is just a tremendous gift and vehicle to be able to do that. So I think we're both looking at it for the greater good. And um, we don't know what this is yet which is quite interesting, and we'll, we'll live into it. But in some way, I feel it's quite an innovative format, or at least something that I don't know of any, any other teachers uh, engaged in in this way. There are podcasts out there, and there's certainly a lot of Dharma talks uh, for teachers talking about the roots of mindfulness. Uh, but we have the ability to continue meeting on Zoom which is something we'd like to try to keep that community together and then shift from that meeting into this live session broadcast on the Facebook group from Sync to the Mountain Studio and then go back into Zoom to talk a little bit more privately, a little bit more in depth and explore what bubbled up for the teachers on Zoom, be able to kind of unpack whatever was talked about on the live session on any given Sunday. So we'll see how that goes. We don't know, as I say, and uh, it's something we're trying out. We're beginning, and uh, it's an exciting adventure, and I'm so uh, grateful for your contribution to being willing to engage in it with me. And uh, we're doing it, as I said, for the greater good, and hopefully people will find some insights along the way or feel it's worthwhile, and we'll continue. Today happens to be uh, December 26, 2021, and we're almost two years into this pandemic that's gripped the world. Do you get a sense that 
how maybe the pandemic's presence, existence, has maybe helped shape this creation? A very visceral sense and a very uh, you know, real sense that this would not be happening if it hadn't been for the pandemic. Um, first, meeting my own needs, I'm live from Zadar, Croatia, and uh, having been a digital nomad that uh, stopped two years ago right here in Zadar, um, there's a lot less nomad and a lot more digital happening for all of us. And I believe that that actually um, is a driving force, both in connection, personal for me to others, and certainly we see that everywhere um, as we continue to connect in this way. So, yes, the pandemic, I think, uh, really has brought this forward in this way for me and probably many others. How about yourself? How has that enabled you to grow Sing to the Mountain Studio? It's interesting. Uh, I don't view it as growing so much as to embracing the idea and the concept mm -hmm. of it, of the studio itself on so many layers. Uh, one of the components that for me on going live or not live, but opening the YouTube channel uh, was happening during the, during the pandemic for sure. But it was also happening while I was going for daily walks out into a local park here called Mission Trails Regional Park to help me navigate being isolated and shut down and everything else that much of the globe was going through. And it's continuing on. Uh, that, re that connection with so many aspects of being out in nature, but also with meeting other people who are also going out into nature would not have happened for me in the way that it did had it not been for the pandemic. And then using the digital platforms then to say, well, Here's some of what I've experienced, whether it shows up as a video production through Sing to the Mountain or as we've met on the Sunday morning teacher meetings, uh, I've shared some of the images that I've captured uh, to send it out to the world without any expectation of mm. uh, whatever comes back my way. Well, it's probably not that accurate. There probably are some expectations that people say, hey, we like your photos, but uh, the feel goods that come with that. Had it not been for the pandemic, yeah. uh, for me also, Sing to the Mountain wouldn't be in its form that it is now. And, uh, you know, it's my sense we have an opportunity that's been presented to us um, to give voice to teachers as we go forward and have guests in our sessions that don't normally or have a... Uh, a ready-made uh, platform to talk about their programs and to talk about their work and their dreams and provide insights primarily to inspire other teachers. And I hope that uh, we become an inspiration through these, these meetings that we're going to have on these live sessions. And if that happens for one teacher, that would be enough. I think I've witnessed some of those changes that you're describing myself already throughout the, uh, I lost count. I didn't realize the MBSR mindfulness teachers have been getting together for six years. The changes I've gone through as, as a teacher and some of the ones that I've seen that my virtual friends now through this community have also little changes that start to show up on the Sunday gatherings, but they don't always get talked about, uh, maybe in this setting, uh, being able to give somebody else a platform to talk about what they're doing and how they're growing and what obstacles are overcome and the challenges. And uh, uh, to me, it just gives me the warm fuzzies uh, just to think of what might emerge from all of this. Yes, no doubt. No doubt. When other teachers start hearing about stories from the field and particularly navigating teaching challenges and uh, similar to the Rumi poem, keep looking at the bandage place. That's where the light enters you. 
here we are at the beginning, and uh, what an exciting place to be. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to kind of play in the sandbox uh, and see what see what shows up. Okay, see you at the mountain in the sandbox singing together. Click down below to join our Mindfulness Teacher Community Facebook group, where you're also invited to post and share. Also, subscribe to Sing to the Mountain Studio so you don't miss out on future recordings of live sessions. Mm-hmm.